uh, basically a few weeks ago, veggie pizza was put in front of me, just like covered in olives. <laughs> and my initial reaction was like, I'm going to pick all of these off. <laughs> um, but then I thought for like one second and I was like, I don't care that much. I'm so hungry. I'm just going to eat this. Fair. And I did. And it was like, um, not terrible. <laughs> like, not like, wow, I want olives on my pizza all the time. Like I went back to the exact same place to actually today and got the pizza without olives. And that was the best in my opinion. That's, um, that's fine. but I did eat a lot of olives on that pizza and since then have eaten another pizza with olives on it that someone else also ordered and didn't didn't have to get rid of them and so proud of your spiritual journey <laughs> yeah, honestly. i feel that maybe we should read the next conto and then when we get to the end of it we discuss what the amusement park ride or food would be and what the conto would be mm. yeah it's like nice. what amusement park snack describes this level of hell yeah, I love I like that. that. I like that. Yeah, so we'll continue fleshing out six, six, six flags, and also <laughs> not go to one. Does anybody remember what the last uh, circle was? Uh, the, the, is that the philosopher everyone smart? Ha uh ha. -huh. No. Oh no, that yeah. was earlier. Anyway. That was not even in hell yet, bro. Oh, true, true, true. Oh wait, uh, Christina's right. There was the pig boy. Pig yeah, boy. pig boy. Pig boy. Chuck boy. <laughs> That's why you don't I know. Must the have been boy. in Montana. <laughs> yeah, I think so. No, Just, yeah. yeah, hell in and of itself. <laughs> hey, oh my god. But with cows, which are nice. <laughs> hell, but well, with cows. That's in there. That's in the eighth circle. Is cows? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> don't worry. Since it's been a little while, and since Darren wasn't here last time. Basically, in the last one, Dante, it was the gluttons, people who were like, you know, just like not taking care of the resources that they had very well. They're basically treated like pigs. They're in like this gross, dirty, muddy snow and just like wallowing in the mud. <laughs> and Dante like recognizes somebody because he recognizes somebody who lived in Florence and he goes over to him and he's like, hey, what's going on? Tell me about Florence. And the guy's like, oh, I'll tell you about Florence. And then says a bunch of stuff that already happened at the time Dante wrote it, but didn't happen yet. So it was prophecy. And then Cerberus was there and Virgil got him to shut up by throwing a bunch of mud in his mouth. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's Cerberus, bro? Dante recognizes this dude. This dude is like, well, I'll talk to you, but only if you tell everybody that about me and that I'm here. Because now that he's in hell, he's like, well, this sucks, but I, at least I can be immortal by everybody who's still alive knowing about me. So that's the only thing that he wants. And then he like says a bunch of stuff and then he stops talking and he's like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And then he just <laughs> his eyes and gets back in the mud and Virgil's like, yep, he's not going to talk until judgment day again. So, <laughs> so silly, that's all dude. you're going to get. Also, like, I like that this guy's like, oh, hey, it's Dante. You're in hell. All right, well, you're definitely getting out of hell. So when you get out, like, bro, you meet someone in hell, they're in hell, bro. <laughs> Not Dante. Dante's too perfect. Dante's too perfect. <laughs> so now we're going down to the fourth circle, which is oh, for man. intemperance in wealth. It's basically misers and people who are, like, greedy and people who, like, extorted from other people and stuff. So we actually start with a speaking role, which is Plutus, but he doesn't say much. So, Pape Satan, Pape Satan, Alape. Thus, Plutus, with his <laughs> clucking voice, began. That noble sage, then, who knew everything, said to encourage me, and this is Virgil now. Let not thy fear distress thee, for whatever power he have, he'll not prevent our going down this rock. Then, to those swollen lips, he turned around and said. Be silent, thou accursed wolf, with thine own rage consume thyself within, not cause us as our going to the bottom. There it is willed on high, or Michael wrought vengeance upon the arrogant rebellion. So once again, Virgil's got to convince every single demon in this whole dang place that Dante's actually supposed to be there and that he's actually supposed to be able to continue traveling through because God wanted it to happen. 
As sails, when swollen by the wind, fall down entangled when the mast breaks, even so, down to the ground, the cruel monster fell. Into the fourth ditch we descended, thus advancing further over the woeful edge, which bags all evil in the universe. Justice of God, alas, who heapeth up the many unheard of toils and pains I saw, and wherefore doth our sin torment us so? Proclaiming to justice of God, but following that tradition of like proclaiming to the muses in Greek drama. And he's just saying like, wow, like this sucks. Like it, you know, us and our sins. And it's such terrible stuff that I'm seeing here. And everybody's so upset about it. As yonder or Charybdis doth the sea, which breaks against the one it runs to meet, so must the people dance a ring dance here. I here saw folk more numerous than elsewhere on one side and the other with great howls, rolling big weights around by strength of chest, they struck against each other. And right there, each turned and rolling back his weight, cried out, why keepest thou and wherefore throw away? They circled thus around the gloomy ring on either hand unto the point of hose, still shouting each to each their vile refrain. Then each turned back and when through his own half ring, he had attained the other budding place. So basically Dante is describing the tortures in this circle and it's the people who were greedy and miserly and just hoarded wealth. And they basically have just these giant boulders that they're just pushing around and they're like walking back and forth around in a circle. And every time there's like two people in the circle and they like go back around and they hit in, they run into each other with their boulders and then they're just yelling at each other like, why are you in my way? Get out of my way. You're in my way. Get out of my way. And then they just turn around and go back the other way and they just smash their boulders into each other and they just like do this forever. Bumper cars. It could either be for six, six, six flags. Bumper cars <laughs> or like a, like a, the pirate ship type, type oh, ride, but like oh, yeah. multiple yeah. ones. <laughs> I like that. So now Dante is going to talk to Virgil. And I, whose heart was well nigh broken, said, Now, teacher, show me who these people are and tell me whether all these tonsured ones upon our left ecclesiastics were. <laughs> Basically asking if they were men of the church. They've got the tonsure, which is like, if you think of like Friar Tuck, he has like the basically the shaved top of his head and he just has like a ring of hair around oh gotcha, mm. gotcha, gotcha. so dante's like i see these people got this weird haircut like were they <laughs> yeah, like, what's up with that <laughs> and he replied to me they each and all were in their first life so squint-eyed in mind that they with measure used no money there clearly enough their voices bark it forth whenever they reach the two points of the ring where difference in fault unmadeth them these churchmen were, who have no hairy covering upon their heads, and popes and cardinals, among whom avarice works its mastery. And I to him, among such men as these, I surely, teacher, ought to recognize a few, who by these sins polluted were. And he to me. Thou shapest a vain thought, the undiscerning life which made them foul, now to all recognition makes them dark. To these two shocks they'll come eternally. These from the... Sepulchre will rise again, close-fisted, these shorn of their very hair. Ill-giving and ill-keeping took from them the lovely world and set them at this fray. To qualify it, I'll not use fair words. I'll pause now, you there. Yes. So basically, Dante's like, who are all these dudes with the weird haircuts? Do they belong to the church? And Virgil's like, yes. And also they suck because <laughs> they, <realize> that <laughs> they suck. <laughs> They just hoarded all this money and they gathered it up and they refused to spend anything on anyone or themselves. And you see where it got them. Like it didn't gain them very much and they didn't even enjoy things in life. Unlike the gluttons, which are in a previous circle, like they were, you know, spending money on food and wasteful and frivolous. And they're like in less torment than these guys. And they had a better time when they were alive. <laughs> um, and also, yes, they're all from the church. And they basically, he's, this is here Dante kind of like one of Dante's diss tracks where he's like, yeah, all these people in the church were just like hoarding wealth from all the people from the church. And they would basically absolve people on their deathbed and charge them like millions of dollars to be like, yep, you're going to heaven. So basically 
the all these church officials would go around and just like gather all of people's money and just be like uh yeah i forgive you you get to go to heaven and like dante's belief is like you actually can't do that you get through heaven by living a holy life so these people are just taking people's money and giving them the unempty promise and so clearly they belong in hell because they're just like hoarding people's money telling them lies (laughs) preventing them from following the true path to salvation and they're like just like ruining everything and they're ruining florence and i hate them (laughs) and then dante's like hey virgil do you think i know any of those guys and virgil's like don't even try it dude nobody are because they suck so bad that their entire identity has been stripped from them which we know is real bad times because the only thing that anybody in hell even seems to want anymore is eternal fame so Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of funny, like, that's how Dante describes most people. Like, they died, and in hell, all they care about is their reputation. <laughs> well, because that's all they have left. Right. You know, like, they have no hope of any other good thing coming to them, so that's the only, like, thing that they're grasping on to. Can't buy your way out of that one, bud. <laughs> Can't buy your way out of this one, bud. <laughs> all right. What's um, interesting about everyone wanting fame in this is that, like, obviously this is based off the of classics, Bear with me a moment. But in um, the Odyssey, when Odysseus comes to the afterlife, which he has to do for like several reasons, um, <laughs> he runs into all of his friends from the Iliad. And he's like, oh, wow, like, I didn't even realize that half of you died. Like, wow, like, um, <laughs> he's like, Agamemnon. And Agamemnon's like, yeah, I'm dead too. Like, I don't know. And then <laughs> <laughs> they get to Achilles, and Achilles is there with Patroclus. And mm. Odysseus is like, Achilles, like, your whole thing was wanting to have a legacy. Well, you're famous now. Like, um, you helped us win the war. You're so cool. Thank you so much. Like, your legacy is set in stone. And Achilles is like, I do not care about my fame. Like, the line is like, I would rather be a slave on earth than the king of the afterlife. Like, it sucks Mm -hmm. being dead. Like, it is not worth it. I should have just gone and, like, had a nice, lovely, long life. I wasted my opportunity and like he does not care about fame anymore. And it's funny to see like in this one, obviously we didn't stop and talk to Achilles in this one, though he was here. (laughs) It's like everyone here is like, this sucks, but like at least people still know my name and it's like Mm -hmm. not worth it. Like the guy who is well known Achilles. The most known man. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, no, it's not like that is not even worth anything. Like that's Mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. kind of, interesting to see how like both of these different representations of the afterlife kind of treat that i kind of like that because like you know dante wrote this i'm sure dante's read is was fully aware of the iliad the odyssey and everything Mm -hmm. so there was a legacy in literature of people caring about such things throughout their lifetime Mm -hmm. and in the afterlife nothing mattering in that in that regard but then dante still like chooses to through the literature, these uh, chooses to give these people that fame in their in their death, which I'm not sure if that's like Dante being like, "Hey, I remember you. I'll make sure everyone remembers you. You were a decent guy. I remember you enough," kind of thing. But like, it is interesting that Dante still chose to do it this way, mm-hmm. with that fully in mind. And if you think about the context in which Dante was writing, first there was that like legacy of classic literature already so he was like well these classic writers did kind of get eternal fame because it's like you're you know however many hundreds or thousands of years later and like we still know about them Mm -hmm. and I think he saw being like he saw himself being part of that legacy Mm -hmm. as something worthy of attaining like worthy of striving for and so Mm -hmm. for him it actually was valuable to have that eternal fame because it meant that you had like achieved the greatest heights as a writer Mm -hmm. and also if at this time in his life like he wasn't young he wasn't a young man like he was starting to approach the end of his life or at least think about it Mm -hmm. obviously he's writing about hell (laughs) he's writing about the afterlife and I think he thinks a lot about 
politics and history and how things change over time and he's like I want Florence to be chill and that might not happen in my lifetime but maybe if I like write my ideas down in such a way that grants me eternal fame like maybe people after me will take these ideas and maybe they'll make Florence good and it will still have been like partly me and that would be you know if like my dying act would be or my legacy would be to help Florence and Italy become what I know it can be maybe that's enough Mm -hmm. yeah i guess like that is a very good point just because like that opinion changes drastically after you've died versus when you're alive right because you know yeah sure achilles says that in the afterlife but when he was alive that was not the case because he still won that legacy because it's i I guess like natural and especially when you are writing your own book i'm pretty sure you're going to make sure that people remember you (laughs) by something which yeah that that's quite interesting actually and you know like at the end of the day, like, we are talking about Dante. This is definitely what most people want in their life one way or another. Even the ones that do choose that kind of, like, how do I say it? I'm not sure if that's, like, a human condition kind of thing, but to some extent, everyone wants to be remembered to some level. And Dante is one of those people that kind of took that to one of the extremes of being most remembered <laughs> for what he did. And to kind of solidify that through showing that every person he meets in hell wanted the exact same thing is almost him justifying his own mm. infinite pursuit of yeah. literary immortality like see everybody <laughs> wants it <laughs> right everybody wanted it and he's like yo look at me doing it yeah. although it is like these are still people in hell so i don't know how that compares to people who are living in heaven or even purgatory mm. but it's like these people are mm. still so connected to stuff that doesn't matter like mm. gluttony food and lust and whatever it's like these mm. earthly things they mm. still think that earth matters more than you know the bigger questions and it's like maybe mm. it's highlighting that as well like right. they're beyond help you know <laughs> they're beyond help exactly <laughs> that's actually a really cool way to do it because like you know it's like the grass is greener kind of thing like obviously grass is not greener on hell but like when you're in hell earth seems dandy mm-hmm. But when you're in heaven, you probably couldn't care about Earth at all, or fame, or anything else, to be honest. I think I I would argue, like, it's not necessarily true that everybody is kind of seeking eternal fame, but I would say everybody is looking for their life to have some sort of meaning, Mm -hmm. and people find that in a lot of different ways, and the people who are in hell... Like, they don't really have any other options. The people who are in heaven and purgatory, you know, people in purgatory, they're like, eventually I'll get into heaven, and that's enough Mm -hmm. just knowing that. Mm -hmm. The people who are in heaven are like, all the meaning I need is right here. Like, I'm just worshiping God every day. That's pretty tight. Right. Right. And it's actually, I like that you put the word meaning into this context, because, like, the whole point of this walking through hell is how these people thought this was the meaning of life. And now that they're doing it, stu- they're stuck doing it for eternity. They realize that that wasn't it. And yeah, as you said, people in heaven, they found that meaning in life. So now they can eternally bask in that meaning, which I think is really cool. It does bring like a boil it down to like, yeah, they were all seeking meaning, but in the wrong places. Which right. I think, yeah. yeah. Pretty and the interesting thing too is the certainty in the afterlife, like in life you've got to follow the pope and you've got to like believe what he says but god's not coming down and be like you know here's what you do like here's your <laughs> annual to the earth you know but and if you're in heaven you're like oh yeah like got it like got it got it <laughs> yep. or 100 certain and you have that mm-hmm. like you know that like spiritual or metaphysical like feeling of certainty that like yep we got it like this is what life is all about and this is the meaning of it and i feel like completely content Mm. Or, whereas in hell you're like oh i i see it i know yeah. what it was supposed to be and i didn't yeah. do it i didn't do it now i do this <laughs> <laughs> now i just like throwing these boulders at my butts for all of eternity <laughs> all of eternity that's how this stuff so, so stays relevant man <laughs> I, I like that quite a lot it kind of makes me think of um people who peaked in high school uh <laughs> yeah. and they're like oh man like is my trophy still in the trophy case man like do they still care about me up there and it's like yeah like but we don't at all yeah but they don't care (laughs) yeah and then people who actually went somewhere after high school they like don't think about high school that much like right (laughs) why (laughs) yeah why is that still there 
Mm. Yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. Like all of hell, all of Dante's hell is people that peaked in their emotional high school and never reached university maturity. <laughs> and Dante is going through his PhD right now. So is this just like, Dante's thesis? <laughs> This is Dante's thesis. Yep. <laughs> this was Florence University kicked out Dante. <laughs> and he's like, God damn it. You know what? I'll show them. <laughs> I'll show them all of everyone. I'll, I'll show, show them with this everything. paper. I'll show mm. all of Florence and the world. <laughs> and the world. And I, the afterlife. And, the afterlife. <laughs> and God. And I'll show God. God the Virgin Mary, <laughs> Santa Lucia, Beatrice. She already knows. Beatrice. Already knows. I'll she show knows. that, Beatrice. I'll show that, Beatrice. Oh, I don't know know. what's up. Oh, so wow. Virgil just like completely read everybody in his whole room. was like, you suck, you suck, you suck. All of you are <laughs> hell and not doing God's work. And now he continues pontificate on why this sucks so bad. Now, canst thou, son? <laughs> I don't know why that was funny to me. Um, call me son. Hey, son. Hey, son. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me son. Um, <laughs> he's fork. Was I supposed to be calling you dad this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, daddy. Papa Satan. <laughs> you can call me Papa Satan. <laughs> Okay. What? Yes. Hey, hold on. We're off the rails. Go back. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> we're off the rails. Now, canst thou, son, behold the short lived cheat of riches that are put in fortune's care, and for whose sake the human race contends? For all the gold there is beneath the moon, and all that was there once could not avail to make one of these weary spirits rest. Basically, Virgil's saying, You understand why this is a bad sin, right? Like, God's rules of fortune are supposed to like dictate how money changes hands and it's supposed to be flowing and that's the natural order of these things and these people thought they were above that system and like there's only a certain amount of money that exists and it's supposed to be used for the good of all humanity not just for people to hoard it Mm -hmm. and that's why God hates it teacher (laughs) 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 that i to him (laughs) (laughs) now tell me further what is this fortune thou dost touch upon which hath the world's good things that thus in her claws oh foolish creatures said he then to me how great the ignorance which hurteth you i have thee swallow now my thought of her the one whose knowledge everything transcends, so made the heavens and so gave guides to them that every part on every other shines thus shines, thus equally distributing the light. Likewise, for worldly splendors, he ordained a general minister and guide to change from time to time the vain goods of the world from race to race, from one blood to another, past all resistance by the minds of men. Wherefore, one person governs and the other declines in power according to her judgment, which hidden is, as in the grass a snake. Your knowledge is not able to resist her, for seeing she decides, and carrying on her government as theirs the other gods. Her permutations have no truce at all. Necessity compels her to be swift. Hence, oft, it happens that a change occurs. (laughs) This is the one who is so often cursed, even by those who ought to give her praise, yet give her blame amiss and ill repute. But she is blessed and gives no heed to that. Among the other primal creatures glad, she turns her sphere and blessed enjoys herself. But now to woe, more piteous, let's descend. Now falls each star that rose when I set out and one is here forbidden too long a stay. All right, so there's a lot of information here. Basically, (laughs) all you need to know is that Fortune, as Virgil's describing it, is basically like a steward of fortune as we think of it, as of luck and of like wealth changing hands and power changing hands and like the natural order of things is for things to move quickly and for things to not be too stable for too long. We can understand why this would be comforting to Dante, but also frustrating because, you know, in our 
intro video, we talked about how like all the power in Florence kept changing hands back and forth. And so part of this is Dante saying like, it's just the natural order of things and I have to accept it and know that like there's a greater plan at work and things will eventually sort things out. You know, as he says, people often curse fortune who ought to be happy that she exists because, you know, like even if they lose power on one hand, like they could gain it back the next moment you know, you never know. And like, that's how it works. But if you try and hoard wealth, then you're like working against that system. And God is the one who like set fortune. And, you know, I think it's really interesting that Virgil uses the word she here uses like, you know, personifying pronouns because it kind of like, it's Dante's way of trying to bridge some of the classics and some of the older theological ideas with like, Christian theology where he's like well Virgil in life thought it was like a whole bunch of gods like up on a mountain somewhere that's not really what it was but Virgil sees like Virgil saw these different stewards Virgil saw these different demons that like pretended to be whatever like the demons were pretending to be gods and they tricked the ancient Greeks into thinking that they were gods and that's why they can't go to heaven but he also saw like these stewards and he's like trying to weave together these philosophies basically Dante's like kind of telling himself like it could get better things could go back to normal things could go get better soon everything's gonna be fine and also this is how it's supposed to work like things are supposed to suck for a while um and then at the end Virgil's like and now it's like the stars are starting to set so it's almost becoming day like we've already spent like a whole day in hell we better get going because if we spent too long here like it's probably going to be bad we cross the circle to the other bank over a bubbling stream that poureth down along a ditch which from it takes its shape then purple black much darker was its water and we accompanying its dusky waves went down and entered on an uncouth path a swamp it forms which hath the name of sticks this dismal little brook when it hath reached the bottom of the gray malignant slopes. And I, who was intensely gazing there, saw muddy people in that slimy marsh, all naked and with anger in their looks. They struck each other, not with hands alone, but with their heads and chests and with their feet and rent each other piecemeal with their teeth. Now they see like this gross black water, like just worming its way through a little ditch and they have to follow it down and they find a marsh and like some marsh in the mar- marsh are all these just like horrible little people just like destroying each other and ripping each other in pieces. Said the good teacher. Son, thou seest now the souls of these whom anger overcame. Nay, more. I'd have thee certainly believe that neath the water there are folks who sigh and make this water bubble at its surface as wheresoever it turned thine eye reveals. Stuck in the slime, they say, sullen we were in the sweet air that's gladdened by the sun, bearing within, within us fumes of surliness. We now are sullen in the swamp's black mire. This hymn they gurgle down inside their throats because they cannot utter it with perfect speech. And so oh. we see round the filthy fen, a great arc between the dry bank and the marsh, our eyes intent on those that swallow mud. And to a tower's foot we came at last. Oh, well. I mean, having not been here for the last chapter, I'm hearing like a lot more mud <laughs> than yeah. I thought there would be. <laughs> yeah. So basically the way Dante kind of took it was he devised punishments that kind of represented a twisting of the sins that landed people here in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, these people were people that were sullen and wrathful in life. So they were like, constantly just like angry and bitter and passive aggressive and so now they're just like angry and bitter and passive aggressive and like they're just stuck in this mud and can't move very fast and they're like breathing in this mud that's like really gross and it's like it just feels bad Mm. and that's kind of how they live their life is this where stick in the mud comes from i do not believe so (laughs) (laughs) sorry the shot (laughs) yeah yeah, i don't know (laughs) So basically, when Virgil kind of quotes them stuck in the slime, he's like, well, in life, we like had all this like toxic hate inside of our souls. And now we have all this toxic mud inside of our souls in hell. And then the mud in the previous chapter was like, oh, they were gluns in life. They're basically just pigs wallowing mud and eating mud. Like in life, they ate all good stuff. And now they're just eating gross slime. 
and mm. slush. What a mud bath. <laughs> what a mud bath, dude. Hell. <laughs> so, I gotta say, there's a lot more mud in hell than I would imagine. We should have a spa at 666 Flags. Mud spa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's the mud spa brawl. And they can serve mudslides. <laughs> there we go. We can serve mudslides. And you get to have like mud wrestling. Mud wrestling. And take mud baths, obviously. That's the spot. And part. take mud baths. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And they can serve those little desserts that are like worms and dirt. Ooh, dirt. Oh, yeah. dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Is that good? I never had that. It's great. It's, it's, uh, it's, really? it's yeah, it's pudding and um cool whip and um Oreos. Oreos. That's most of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Is it yeah. actually good? Oreos yeah, I love dirt. I love dirt. It's like a family. I fun. love dirt. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I love is when they make it into a graveyard. They get those Milano cookies and they put them in as gravestone. Oh, cute. That's sick. Yes. We're usually That's purists. Good. We've only tried worms like a couple times, but I'm a worm purist. I only put in worms. Just only eat the dirt. No, a, a dirt purist. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Only the finest dirt for me, thanks. <laughs> so to Christina's point, mudslide would be a pretty good um, cocktail pairing. Yeah. Many of these chapters that we've been in so far. Yeah. What, what cocktail are we thinking for this one? Well, maybe the mudslide should be with the pigs for the gluttony, actually. Like a dirty right. something. I was thinking that. For Pig this one? Mud. What'd you say? A dirty something? <laughs> dirty? A dirty martini? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do dirty martini. <laughs> My heart says Bloody Mary. Ooh. Not entirely sure. Why. I think just because Bloody Mary killed people and these people are angry. I'm pretty yeah, sure Mary maybe was for a different place. circle. <laughs> maybe for a different circle. Yeah, let's 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 yeah. Them more bloody. So these, Dirty Mary. The last chapter, I feel like there's probably a lot of good like gluttony cocktails. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think a mudslide would be perfect for the last chapter because they're all wallowing in mud and it's a very mm-hmm. gluttonous beverage, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Sure. This chapter, Wait, what's a mudslide? It's like a milkshake, basically. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Dude, you, you <laughs> yes. just swim in mud. I read that before. I just remembered. Yes, That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> yes. 100%. Yeah, I mean, this chapter, we have like angry people. We have misers. I don't know enough about cocktails. But, Is like, there anything that has like to do with money in the name? Of a cocktail? Hmm. Arnold Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought he was a rich man. Oh my gosh. Once um, I was hanging out with Phoebe and they were making drinks. They were making drinks for like a long time. Like they were like, uh, all right, it's going to be a complicated drink, but I read about it. It's going to be so good. Like they were working on this drink, honestly, for like half an hour. They're like putting stuff in and like, we have to freeze this now. And then they get it out and it's not frozen. They're like, I'm going to get some violets from the garden. It's like this whole what? thing. And then they give me the drink and I'm like, mm. and then I drink it. And I was like, this tastes exactly like an Arnold Palmer. Like you took lemonade and iced tea and did this. And that's, that's all I have. And I was like, <laughs> it's good. And then like Colin was like, oh, is this an Arnold Palmer? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and they were like, I spent so long on this. So movie. much time. Oh, All right, no. just, just try That's it good. and tell me this does not taste like an Arnold Palmer. And they were like, "Shut up." Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> There's anything to say. Um, you saying that though, Arnold Palmer makes me think like we could make up a drink and call it like Jeff Bezos. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> It would just be like union workers' tears. Oh. Workers' tears. Lemonade because they can't go to the bathroom. Oh, no. 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 No question. You add smoky flavor, but you get the smoke by like lighting a $100 bill on fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you cannot get this smoke from other sources. You have to have a $100 bill. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a Jeff Bezos cocktail. All right. Well, there's a moneymaker. Oh, okay. So whatever drink we invent for this circle, because of all the people with the tonsures, it should have like a cinnamon sugar rim. Mm. Like the That's hair. a good idea. Even basil. if it doesn't go at all with what else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 
Maybe do something have. with Fireball because Fireball, like, if you don't want to spend any money on booze, you buy Fireball. Yeah, and that's right. Sugar. What else? You know, and Fireball makes me angry, so I agree. How about one of those big um, round ice cubes to symbolize those big boulders? They're rolling. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm getting there. What else? Cinnamon, round cubes, Fireball. You know, what that's not fireball? bad. Cinnamon, Fireball. Yeah, what <laughs> would do well is like the one time I've enjoyed Fireball is when I followed it with um, cider. Yeah. Oh, it's like a- apple cider. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what? It's like I pie. Actually, that great. makes so much sense. That that's just literally an apple drink. <laughs> yeah. That's just yeah. apple cider. Oh, okay. Well, and it would kind of have like a muddy dark color with apple. Oh yeah. It works, dude. That's it. <laughs> Do that at home. I think Apple we, cider think, fireball. I think a rustic tonsider. Tonsers and sugar around your glass. Yo, <laughs> the dirty Dante. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think we just made a drink that we wanted to drink. I don't think it was. We just want to drink this. <laughs> Please yeah, make this. Um, so I would like to drink getting it. less and less about this circle of hell. <laughs> yeah, more just like rather have a nice drink. Let's see. Let's see. Actually, like, oh. there could be something with like this, like the swamp's black mire. Oh yeah, maybe like some activated charcoal in there. Ooh yeah, it could just be like charcoal lemonade, like hard lemonade. <laughs> Ooh. I think you could put activated charcoal in the like apple cider fireball. Cider. Oh, and just like yeah, have it be darker. With cinnamon sugar, yeah, with a cinnamon sugar rim for the tonsure. Oh, actually, you know what else we could put in it? We could put honey because, like, the bees hoard the honey. They, like, get all the nectar from all the flowers and they just hoard it in their hives. Mm. Right? I wonder mm. if it would be just, like, too sweet. Stir- like, real sweet. Yeah. If we add honey to, like, it's apple cider. Honey- <laughs> well, yeah. Would, like, fireball and honey. Uh, what's, like, a churchy beverage? Wine. Grape juice. Do they all on the same page? But like one of them actually goes to church. Um. Holy water. Holy yeah. water. So vodka. Just like a little spritz of holy water in there. Little spritz. Actually, how um, do you make holy but water? But also like one of those ones where it like lights, like we can light it on fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just gasoline? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like Ooh, that. It'd be cool if we could, like, light the rim on fire. Do you think? That would be sick. Be Circles of hell. Dangerous. <laughs> Do you think that if you did, like, lemon juice, fireball, and honey, like, would that be a drink? With activated charcoal? Maybe. <laughs> With charcoal? Wait, I missed something. Sorry. Like, <laughs> We're like charcoal. Well, no. I don't know. I think the cinnamon and the lemon is kind of weird. Yeah. I don't like fireball, so you know. I'm not a huge fireball person either. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, strong flavor. Yeah. Like the 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 apple cider I see, but I mean, you know, when I think of this, I want to think of something like Christmassy. But this circle of hell is not very Christmassy because it's the opposite of giving. So <laughs> what's the opposite of Christmas? <laughs> All right. Maybe we do like Easter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put a bunny. Just, just one of those. What are those called? The marshmallow bunnies. <laughs> Oh, marshmallow bunnies, yeah. I want a peep. A peep, yeah. <laughs> Put a peep in it. Put a peep in Fireball. That sounds horrendous. I think we're getting further on. away. We're like, like, getting light, further. Let a peep on fire. Let it melt into the drink. <laughs> now we're closer. Now we're a lot closer. Yes, torture the peep. Gets like caramely and crystallized sugary oh. and then just... And it falls into the, the Fireball. <laughs> Yeah, we just <laughs> reenact murder every time we make this cocktail. I think you take a frosting um, piping bag and you write greedy on the peep. And then you light it on fire to symbolize that you're torturing greedy people. And that, that is, is so bad. Like, greedy because the peeps are just like 100% 
I guess it's more like gluttony because they're just all sugar, right? Mm. <laughs> you first burn the nutrition facts from the back of the peeps box. <laughs> 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 and they just don't think about it. And they got greedy on it. <laughs> I like it. Pig, that. not Pig. peep. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, this peep, peep thing can just be applied to every circle of hell, right? Just how to kill peeps in different ways. Yeah. Or into a drink. <laughs> and the greedy, you know, we can do that. Two chop peeps it up. <laughs> fighting. Yeah, chop up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we differentiating the peeps by their sins then? That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, I think this so, is yeah. Peep. That's what happens. The gluttony peep falls into mud and slowly drowns. Okay, I need somebody to create a new Instagram page right now where they reenact <laughs> every circle of hell, but with marshmallow peeps and bunnies, please. I think exactly um, right now. Marat is our marketing person. <laughs> I, I'm the marketing person, apparently. This and I'm all about my peeps. This is not related to classics and chill. This is a separate art commission. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, please. As a consumer and a capitalist, if I saw peeps that were Dante themed on a shelf, I would buy tents. I would buy them off. I, I would clear them out. So, like. Tens, I say. You know, like, <laughs> I think there's a really big opening for sponsors here. <laughs> peeps? Yeah, dude, like, up, peeps? peeps? Sponsors, what are y'all doing? Um, <laughs> How do you feel fireball? About fireball? <laughs> peeps fireball and Fireball. Let's, let's get a collab uh, edition going. Let's go, yeah. <laughs> fireball flavored Peeps. It works. Peeps Whoa. flavored Fireball. <laughs> cool. I love the way Peeps flavored Fireball. Then it's a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. Actually, I like that even better. I like that better. That oh, we could also get good. Oreos in on this because of the dirt. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. And the like And what? That, right? And like layered. Because it'd be like levels of hell. Oh, oh that's yeah. true. I meant like as sponsors. <laughs> 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 she's thinking money where thinking are you <laughs> where's your distracted with eating stuff she's yeah the next thinking. chapter is a hardcore diss track by the way oh city yeah diss. next one is wait what, what's in the fifth circle city of diss track Awful. city of diss track oh actually it's city of diss <laughs> oh my god this city of diss <laughs> diss city <laughs> This city, we built this city. Wrathful and sullen. Oh, that makes sense. That's like a little area in the amusement park where you just like go to be insulted. It's like <laughs> your mama jokes, with them, right? It's like the grouchy chef kind of calf, like whatever yeah. restaurant vibe, except there's no food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this video if you like cake or <laughs> um, or or Oreos or Oreos. <laughs> Uh, oh, any dessert or alcohol would be fine. Or you have fireball <laughs> peeps, get after us. Yeah. Yeah, like if you work for Peeps International. Comment if you work for Peeps Comment. International. <laughs> and <laughs> Can you message us on YouTube? <laughs> Please message us on YouTube. Subscribe and then... if you work for a competing company and hit us up too. Right? We'll what take Peeps, <laughs> we'll take Deeps. Any okay. marshmallow novelty you have to offer, we'll burn it. We'll burn it. <laughs> <laughs> do you want your product burned? Hey, yes, we'll we, do it. We, the place. we got some ideas for you, let me tell you. How do you want to murder your product? We got nine ways to tell you. 